We've added a lot of code and made a lot of changes in the last four lessons. So let's take a brief lesson here where we go and clean up some of the changes and do some refactoring. The first file we're going to clean up is the game session class in the engine project in the view models folder. When we added the has monster property on line 71, we used a lambda here the equal sign and a greater than sign, so that the property will return a computed or a calculated value. So let's do that for the has location properties, the has location to north, east, south, and west. And instead of having just a get there, we'll now have what we have on line 60, 63, 66, and 69, where we just do a lambda and return the value that's calculated. This doesn't change any of the functionality for these properties, but I think it makes the code look a little bit cleaner and it's a little bit easier to work with now. Next, we'll clean up the item factory class. Originally, we had the standard game items variable initialized inside the constructor, and I just moved it here to the same line, line nine, where we declare the variable. Just one less line in the code, and we can always be sure that this variable is initialized. I've also added a read-only attribute to this variable. That means the variable can only be set equal to something, either here where it's declared on line 9, or inside a constructor. This isn't something that we need to do, but it kind of protects us from accidentally setting the value somewhere else. So now we know it can only ever be set when we declare it, or in the constructor. So we can't ever accidentally set it here in the create game item function, for example. In my opinion, if you can write your code in a way so that you can't make a mistake when you're programming, that's always a good idea. Next, we'll do a little cleanup in the world factory class and the world class. Inside the world factory, when we call the add location function, we passed in the full name for the image file for the location. This included the forward slash engine, semicolon component, forward slash images, forward slash locations. So that way the program would know where to find this image resource. But since we're doing that for every one of these, we can move that into our add location function. So I've taken that out of the image file name for the parameter we pass in. And when we go to the add location function and we set the location's image name, now we just put it in here on line 20 of the world class. This will save us from, if we go back to the world factory and start creating more locations, we won't accidentally type in the wrong path, the wrong resource location. And again, this is a, another nice way to protect us because we can easily mistype something but now that we have the string added in one place, we're going to be a lot safer. So make sure that once you have this here in the world add location function, that you go and remove it from all the locations that we create inside the world factory. The next thing we'll clean up is the monster class. The only change I want to make here will be on line 35, where we set the image name. Before we were concatenating the two strings, the resource information plus the image name, but now I'm using string interpolation, the dollar sign before the string, and then the curly brace pair with the variable name inside of it. This is just to be consistent with the way we're doing most of the other string concatenation. And the final change will be in the main window Dot .xaml.cs dot file. On line 13, we had this private underscore game session variable, and we were doing the same thing that we were doing with the standard game items list. We had this as a private variable, and then inside the constructor, we were setting the value. Now I've just moved the setting the value up to line 13, so it's on one line, and I've also made this read only. Because again, this is something that we only want to have created either when we declare the variable or in the constructor.
So this will just be done once at the beginning and that's it. Now that the game session is a read only variable, we can never assign another value to it and we don't have to worry about accidentally overwriting it. And that's all the cleanup we're going to do for now. After doing any refactoring, you always want to rerun the program or rerun your unit test and make sure that the program still works. And it looks like it does. If you have any questions or want to get the source code, you can go to the support page and the link to that will be in the description below the video as always. And if you have questions, you can leave them on the support page or leave it on the video and I'll get back to you as soon as possible.